Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest where it's nice and sunny. I hope everybody is having a good week so far. Welcome Kyber. Hi Hemant. Hi Nigheim. Navneet, good to see many students in the class. We are looking at a listening section part one and two example today with some questions and strategies. Again, these materials are coming to you from aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. And for the general version of the exam, check us out at gieltshelp.com. On both of these websites, there are loads and loads of great materials to help you pass your next IELTS exam, learn better English and communication. This is our academic web portal here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join. And this is our general uh, version of the website here with the green background. Click that big red button to join. We'll use the academic one here in just a few moments for the listening section. Students, if you have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Also, you can download our apps, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help from your app stores. Look for our shields. Those will be the app icons. And the Academic IELTS Help app, you can link it to your web account at ahelp.com. And your General IELTS Help app, you can link it to your gieltshelp.com account for a really integrated and comprehensive learning experience. So students, uh, we'll begin the listening today. We'll finish it up tomorrow with sections three and four. I'm going to uh, play the listening audio in just a moment here. Uh, this uh, audio is for exam number five from our books. It's going to be listening part one. Please don't write the answers into the chat. Wait till the end. We'll go through the answers together. Don't write it into the chat because your classmates, the other viewers, uh, they need a fair chance to answer on their own. Uh, don't confuse them with uh, wrong answers. So my volume is maximum on my side. So uh, please make sure to have your volume up and uh, use a headset if, uh, if it's uh, not loud enough. Okay. And again, don't write your answers into the chat. So I'm just going to uh, hop over to our academic account here, jump into my student account by clicking that there. And then let's end that tour. Uh, so again, because this is exam five, it's coming from CD5 and it will be uh, track one. So you can see lots and lots of audio materials on our websites in the premium package. Um, here we go, students. Get ready to uh, listen and uh, answer some questions. Okay, follow with the audio and then we'll go through it together as a class. Here we go, everyone. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions, Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two people as one tries to return a defective product. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good afternoon. 
I bought a product from your store one week ago, and I've been having difficulties getting it to work properly. Of course, sir. Do you have the original receipt from the purchase? The first piece of information I need is the date you purchased the product. Yes, I actually have it right here. I purchased it eight days ago, on the 6th of July. The 6th of July. Great. The man says he purchased the item on July 6th. So this answer has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon. I bought a product from your store one week ago and I've been having difficulties getting it to work properly. Of course, sir. Do you have the original receipt from the purchase? The first piece of information I need is the date you purchased the product. Yes, I actually have it right here. I purchased it eight days ago, on the 6th of July. The 6th of July, great. I also need the name of the product as indicated on the receipt. Certainly, the receipt shows it as SOJO232XD. SOJO232XD? Yes, that's right. Okay, yes. I see the product in my records now. It is a 23-inch computer monitor? Yes, that's correct. Now tell me, did you buy the extended warranty on the monitor? No, I did not. I always feel like those warranties are a bit of a scam. Perhaps, until you need the warranty? Perhaps. But there must be some sort of manufacturer's warranty, right? There may be. Let me check for you. Hmm. Okay. Yes. It seems there is a manufacturer's warranty. The warranty is for 60 days, two months. Great, then I shouldn't encounter any problems in returning it. Well, actually, we only accept returns for a week after purchase. Since you purchased the computer monitor eight days ago, you'll have to deal directly with the manufacturer. How annoying. What steps must I take then? Well, the company that makes the monitor has a depot in Birmingham. You must post it to them. Okay. Do you have their address? Yes. It's on Edgebastion Park Road and... Hold on. You'll have to spell Edgebastion for me. I've never heard of it. Of course. It is spelled E-D-G-B-A-S-T-O-N. And then the rest of the address? The address number is 89 and the unit number is 5. Okay. So 89 Edgebastion Park Road, Unit 5. That's right. And the postcode is... B-1-5-2-R-U. B-1-5-2-R-U? That's right. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. Great, but one concern I have is the cost of posting something as large as a computer monitor. Indeed. Such a product must weigh a few kilos and will certainly set you back some money to post. Let me see if the company takes such a problem into consideration. Well, that would certainly be nice if they did. Hmm. Yes, it seems they do. They have a program in place where they pay postage for the exchange of goods under manufacturer warranty or product recall. That's great news. What do I have to do to use this service? It's fairly simple. You just call their Birmingham Depot and request a prepaid postage voucher. Then you take the item to the post office along with the voucher and the post office will take care of the rest. Sounds simple enough. Do you have a phone number for the depot in Birmingham? Yes, you can reach them on 0121 Four nine six zero six three three. Oh, and be sure to call during business hours. They're open from 10 in the morning until 6 in the evening. 10 until 6, understood. One final question. What would I have had to do to return the monitor if I had purchased the extended warranty from your store? <laughs> well, the process would have been much simpler, sir. You could have simply brought it into the return desk at your local store. 
We would have given you your choice of a new monitor, your cash back, or store credit in the amount of 110% of the original cost of the item. 110% store credit? Wow, that seems too good to be true. Well, company policy is that we want satisfied customers, and when they are not satisfied, we feel the need to compensate them for this in some small measure. Perhaps next time I'll buy the extended warranty. How much would it have cost on the monitor I bought? Only £20. £20 would have been well worth it to save me the trouble of dealing directly with the manufacturer. Well, now you know, sir. Indeed I do. Thanks again. For... That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, students, and make sure to check those answers in that half minute to avoid silly mistakes and catch some easy marks. Let's go back to the beginning and we'll go through the answers together. Now, you probably saw me kind of scroll through uh, the exam a little bit at the beginning during the uh, preparation time. That's because I was looking for the topics of sections two and three and I saw that uh, they were something about a radio show uh, for uh, topic two. So you can do that in the paper-based exam, maybe. Not in the computer-based exam, but it is a good strategy. All right, <clears throat> let's go through these. Now, remember, from this year, uh, you do not have an example. So this exam is from uh, 2017 or 18. Um, so they still had the example, but now in 2020, you don't have this example in part one and they don't call it section one they call it part one now so just a couple of minor changes so don't expect that extra time okay all right uh number one what product did the man purchase was it a a computer b a computer monitor or c a television Nadia Khalil says uh, one is B, it's a computer monitor. Abhishek agrees. And it was, okay. Uh, so this is the first one. It's usually uh, the first couple questions are a little bit easier, but definitely pay attention. Um, what was the size? Bonus question. Uh, the size of the computer monitor. How big is this computer monitor? How many inches? Did anybody catch? that detail. Always challenge yourself to listen actively and catch as many details as possible. Janak, number one is computer monitor. Okay, not computer. Uh, anybody catch that? So Abhishek says, I think it was a 21 inch. Um, I believe it was a 21 inch. Yeah. And again, if you don't know the answer, the best place to check are the transcripts. So yeah, it was a 21-inch computer monitor. Okay, so B was the correct answer. Now, for questions two and three, you had to choose two from six here. Okay, so this is um, a multiple choice question with multiple answers. All right. Use logic. Okay, logic will help you here. So, logic. Okay, um, until now, uh, what two questions did the woman ask? So, the woman asked two questions for information. What were the two questions? that the woman asked for information. And if you think about that, you can get the correct answer here. So a lot of you are saying it's A and B, um, but it's not necessarily the right answer. It's what two pieces of information are required to access the record of the purchase. So Derek says the name and date, okay? 
And those were the two questions, right? The woman says, when did you buy it? And the man says, July 6th. And then the woman says, okay, and what is it? Right? And the man says it was a computer monitor. So the uh, correct answers are F and E, the purchase date and the name of the product. So here E and F are needed. Okay, The name of the product and the purchase date. This is the specific name and date, but here it's what two pieces of information are required to access the record of the purchase. This question is in general. Okay, uh, Be careful when um, the question looks too easy or too simple to be true. It might just be. So you have to use your logic. Pay attention to the grammar of the question. What two pieces of information are required to access the record of the purchase? This is a general question. The correct answer is the name and the date, as some of you have said. Okay, So that's what she asks for. And the man says the date, and the man says the name. Okay, She doesn't talk about the serial number or the warranty information. Okay, So the correct answers are E and F. The order doesn't matter in your answer sheet. So a couple of important tips for this type of what I call multi multiple choice question. Number one, spend a little bit of extra time to review these types of questions, especially because this is two. Okay, So this one is number two and number three. So spend twice as much time as you do on a single question and really pay attention to the choices. When you're listening, it's sometimes a good idea to write down what you hear, like, oh, okay, she asked for the date and the name. And if you write that down on your question booklet, you'll be able to match these up, okay? And then get the correct answers. This is the type of question that you can double check during the review time, okay? All right. Next one, uh, note completion. So complete the notes below. Write no more than two words and or a number. The warranty length, 60 days. This is a good piece of information because it helps you locate yourself in the audio. Okay, so use this for location. Okay, so you know where you are in the audio. She says, okay, the warranty's for 60 days. Then you know that these answers are coming soon. So the delivery uh, depot location is in Birmingham. And the address, what is the address of uh, this uh, person? Okay. Elujoba Adebola says, Hi, Adrian. I'm Elujoba from Nigeria. I sent a message after my speaking in February. I got my result, and listening is 7 5, reading is 6, writing is 6 5, speaking is 8, overall band 7. Thanks, Adrian. God bless. Congratulations, Elujoba. It's fantastic. Elujoba, can you send me an email with that information as well? I'd love to get your testimonial. Thank you. Okay. So I see a lot of students answering this question with Edge Bastion. Yeah, it has to be capital for the first E. So Edge Bastion B 89. So Edge Bastion 89, Park Road, Unit 5. Okay, um, that's clearly discussed. Again, the E has to be capital. You can write all the letters capital, but the E must be capital, okay? It cannot be a small E. If you write a small E, you'll get it wrong. All right, students, and what is the postcode, number five? So uh, what is the postcode for this uh, manufacturer or this depot? And again, that's repeated as well. Okay, so Khrid Dinah says it's B152RU, 
Yeah, and here capital small, it's okay. B15 2 RU. So B15 2 RU. I recommend uh, using capital letters for postal codes or other kinds of uh, numbers that you get in letters. Uh, it's just more clear. Okay, it's clear to have all capital letters. So use capital letters. Okay, so Edge Bastion 89, B152RU. Then you had a little bit of a break to uh, review questions 6 to 10. Again, use that time wisely. Okay, number 6 and 7 were fill in the blanks. Write no more than three words for each answer. Uh, number six, in order to get free delivery on product returns, the customer must telephone the depot and request a prepaid something. Okay, so uh, what must the uh, customer request? A prepaid something. Okay, Boomi says it's a post voucher. Almost Boomi. Uh, the adjective form of post, okay? Post is noun, and Elena, that's correct. It's a postage. Nice, Charlie. Postage voucher. This is a, pro a common noun, so it doesn't have to be uh, capital. It's a postage voucher, okay? Postage voucher is the correct answer. So postage is the adjective for post. Okay, post is the noun or the verb. So careful with that, all right? Not posted, Dr. Krishna, it's postage, voucher. Um, there are many words in English that have this G-E sound when it's an adjective, so pay attention to those. Uh, okay, and what is the phone number for the depot? Again, this is dictation work, numbers, so what is the phone number? Number seven, what is the phone number? All right, <clears throat> I see a lot of you writing it. It's just Google is hiding it. Doesn't want you to share these, so I have to click a lot of show, show, show. Just give me a second. All right. So a lot of you have the right answer, it looks like. Um, the correct phone number is 0121-496-0633, okay? And make sure your numbers are very, very clear. To make your zeros absolutely clear, you can put a line through them like that, okay? So 0121 Four nine six zero six three three. The spaces don't matter, okay? Um, you can write it all in one long string line. It's fine. Just make sure that you have all the correct numbers, okay? So that was the phone number. All right. Let's keep going here with the next questions. So uh, here we have a few more multiple choice questions. Um, number eight, for how many hours is the depot open each day? Uh, when you're reviewing this, you want to change this into a statement. So the depot is open something hours per day. Okay, so you will likely hear uh, these types of uh, answers, not as a question like how many hours, but as a statement. The depot is open something hours a day. Or sometimes you have to do a little bit of thinking and it will say something like the depot is open from until... So now you have to do a little bit of math. And again, uh, logic will help you here. So um, they say, okay, it's open from uh, 10 until 6. And that means that it's open for 8 hours. And I see many of you 
figured that out. So Saswati, good job. Pachu, good job. The answer is B. It's eight hours. It's open for eight hours. Okay. Um, many of our students, I know that um, um, I just saw Flower Sun Sam late for class. It's because we had our spring daylight savings time change in many countries, including Hungary. So for me, it's the same time as usual, but we did uh, turn our clocks uh, back an hour, or sorry, forward an hour, so it's an hour earlier in many countries, okay? So that's why if uh, you're like, oh, why is Adrian teaching a little bit earlier right now? It's because we had daylight savings and we changed the clocks. So hunger, it's still the same time. All right, so uh, number eight is B. Okay, all right, here we go. Uh, number nine, it's just one question, but you have to choose uh, three answers, okay? When it's just one question, it's usually an easier three choices. But again, one of the strategies is to write down what you hear, okay? Yeah, Elena, I know you asked and I didn't have time to answer that question yesterday, but it's because of uh, daylight savings. Yeah, so Derek says just turn on the notifications. That's right, Derek, and that will adjust for the time. All right, so here we go, students. Number nine, uh, which three options are customers given upon returning an item having purchased the warranty? A, exchange of the item for a new one, 100% stored credit. C, free postage. D, cash back. E, 110% stored credit. Or F, 20 pounds. What are the answers? Now, the woman was quite clear here. So A is one exchange for a new item. So you can take your computer monitor back to the store and say, hey, look, this one isn't working. Please give me a new one. They'll still no problem. Here's a different new one. Just give that one back. Okay. Um, and then uh, the other one was D, cash back. So they can say, okay, it doesn't work. Here's your money back. You want to go somewhere else and buy the product. That's okay. And E, this was the kind of an interesting one, but they talked about it. The woman says you can get 110% store credit. So buy other goods at 110% store credit. Why? Because they want customers to come back and return to the store. So the correct answers were A, D, and E. Now remember, this is just one question. So you have to get all three correct to get one point. In your answer sheet, you would see the uh, space for question number nine. So you'd have to write A, D, and E all in that one space. They all three have to be there to get that correct. Okay. All right. One more, students. One more question here. Question number 10. Choose the correct letter A, B, or C. Number 10, the woman mentions an item that costs 20 pounds what is this item? The computer monitor, extended warranty, manufacturer's warranty, A, B, or C? Which one is it? Number 10. The answer here is B. Okay, and it's logic, right? Computer monitors usually never cost 20 pounds. Even if you get an old one, uh, it will probably cost you more than 20 pounds, okay? That would be far too cheap for a computer monitor. Uh, manufacturer's warranty, those are usually free. So even if you miss this, okay, even if you miss this audio, you should be able to figure out that it's B. So uh, one of my most important tips for you from this listening is use your logic, be an active listener, okay? So uh, logic can help you figure out about half of the correct answers in listening uh, parts one and two. Keep that in mind, okay? So there's a big tip with good logic you can figure out about 50% of the correct 
answers in parts one and two of the listening section. Okay, try that when you're doing your practice exams at home and you'll see that I'm right, a lot of the answers you can get just by using logic, okay? So uh, make sure, make sure to always listen actively. It's very important. All right, students, so uh, what was your score? How did you do? Um, what did you get from 10? Okay, so you had 10 raw points possible here for this. How did you do? What did you get from 10? Elena, you got 10 out of 10. Good job. All right. Boomy, 7 out of 10. Charlie, 8. All right, 7. Um, yeah, for part 1, okay, for part 1 in the listening, your goal is to get 8 or more correct. Okay. Uh, why? Because it's just going to get more and more difficult now. So you want to get at least eight, hopefully nine uh, correct. If you're getting less than eight correct, you have to be careful because it's tough to get a high band score in the listening section if you're losing five marks in part one. Okay. All right. Let's do a little bit more students. Let's do part two of the listening. So again, I'm going to play the audio from our website. If you want to get all of our practice exams and videos, then join the premium packages there. Um, and uh, I've got my volume turned up max. So uh, please uh, use a headset if it's quiet, turn up the volume on your side. And uh, again, don't write your answers into the chat, please. Uh, wait until the end and uh, then we'll do the answers together just so you don't spoil it for your fellow students. Okay, here it's some kind of a radio talk show. We know that because we looked at it and this will be coming from track two, disc five. All right, students. So again, please do not write your answers into the chat, wait until the end. Here we go. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of a radio news magazine discussing the importance of doing good in the community. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Hello, I'm Emma Robertson and I'd like to welcome our listeners to Beyond the Lens, the programme that aims to dig deeper on issues in culture and society. Today, we have Professor Hudson McMahon from the University of Bristol's Department of Social Policy. Hello, Professor McMahon. Do you want to tell us a little about what you'll be presenting today? Of course, Emma. But first, I'd like to thank you for having me on the show. My wife and I are both avid listeners of Beyond the Lens, and it's a bit of a thrill to be on the show. But I digress. Today, I want to talk about the importance of doing good in the community and in society. There are many ways of doing this, but the two most common ways are volunteering and giving to charity. However, these methods of improving community and society have an important difference. While volunteering one's time is almost always a positive for society, giving to charity is significantly more problematic. Problematic, Professor McMahon. It would seem to me that giving to charity is always a positive for society. We celebrate those among us who are the greatest donors to charity. Yes, and in general, it is warranted. I do want to clarify. In general, giving to charity is good.
but one must be very careful for two reasons. First, some charities do not do sufficient amounts of charitable good per pound. And second, some charities receive too much money that could be spent better on other causes. Let me discuss each of these in turn. This seems to me a rather radical thesis. It seems that way, but I hope to convince you otherwise by the end of the program. Now, getting back to charities, some charities simply do not give a lot of their received monies to the actual performance of good acts. For instance, some charities utilize less than 10% of their donations on actual charitable activities. The rest goes to salaries, promotion, and other overhead costs. So for a donation of £100, it may be the case that less than £10 actually goes to helping someone. That sounds terrible, but it still helps people, right? Well, yes. But as charitable givers, we should try and reward those charities who do most good with the least amount of money. By that, I mean that those thinking of donating to charity should do research on a charity before giving to the cause. There are other charities where more than 50% of donations go to the end cause. These charities are much more deserving of your patronage. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. Another reason to be discerning when it comes to your choice of charities is what I call the relative utility of a charitable donation. Hmm, let me take a guess here, Professor McMahon. Is the relative utility of a donation how much good it does relative to other donations? That's just about it, Emma. The relative utility of a donation is how much good a donation does per amount spent. For instance, the disease MND, motor neuron disease, was in the news in recent years and MND charities received a windfall of donations. This sounds all well and good, but there is a problem. Unlike, say, heart disease, MND does not affect very many people. While it would be wonderful to cure the disease, there are better allocations of our limited charity funds. Wait. So you're saying it was bad for people to give to MND charities? Not quite. Only that it was suboptimal. Because there is limited supply of money given to charity each year, it is important that it is used at least somewhat optimally. And allocating overwhelming amounts of money to a disease that affects very low percentage of people is extremely suboptimal. That's very interesting, Professor McMahon. So how can our listeners try and optimise their charitable gifts? First of all, don't be caught up in viral social media campaigns. Instead, use such moments to remind yourself of the importance of giving to charity in general, and not just to niche causes with good promotion. And second, do your research. Before you donate, look up how much of a charity's donation go to the actual end goal. Additionally, look up how many people are affected by the charity's end cause. The more people there are affected, and the worse they are affected, the more likely you should be to donate to that cause. It is all about maximizing good in the world. That certainly sounds like a noble goal, but if everyone donates... That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And once again, students, make sure to check your answers in that half minute. We will go through the answers together now from the top. So let's do this. Here we go. Question number 11. What is the name of the radio show? What is this called? They say it twice. First, the woman says it. She says, welcome to. And then uh, the man says it. Uh, my wife and I are avid listeners of... 
Derek says beyond the lands. Not quite, but almost, Derek. Very close. You got the first two words. Nazir Ahmed says it's beyond the lens. Yeah, it was a little bit of a tough one. It's beyond the lens. Okay, so beyond the camera lens. Obviously, here we're talking about the camera lens, and the name of this show is Beyond the Lens. Now, the B and the L have to be capital letters. They must be big letters, Elena, because it's the name of the radio show so if you see this of course you should be thinking okay these are going to be capital letters the name of the book the name of the show the name of the street it's always uh big letters okay so beyond the lens names are proper nouns always careful with that okay that's why it's safer to write all capitals in your answer sheet if possible. So beyond the lens, beyond the lens. All right. Uh, questions 12 to 15. This was a category type or categorization type of question. Um, and uh, pay attention to these NB. It means note, by the way. You may use any letter more than once. So A applies to volunteering. B applies to charitable giving. And C applies to neither. Now here you needed to of course, no two very important words, volunteering and charity or charitable giving. Okay. Uh, volunteering means you give your time free. That's volunteering. And charity means you give money, you donate money. Give money. Okay. So that's the difference. So volunteering, giving your time, charity, giving your money. Okay. Um, right now I'm volunteering to teach IELTS. Of course, I'm also encouraging you to buy our products, gltshelp.com or ahelp.com, but I'm not asking for money up front. So this would be considered volunteering my time, not charity. Okay. All right. So here we go, students. Uh, affects fewer people, but may be highly inefficient. So inefficient means not efficient. So affects few people, but is inefficient. Is it A, B, or C? So affects few people, highly inefficient. The correct answer is... C, neither, okay, uh, because it affects fewer people. Charities affect usually a lot of people. So the first answer is C, applies to neither of them. Both of these, uh, volunteering is efficient and charities usually affect a lot of people, okay? So number 12 is C. Number 13, can be problematic for various reasons. So number 13 can be problematic for various reasons. For various means several or a few different reasons. So if I give my time, is that a problem? Eh, probably not. If I'm giving money, can that be a problem? Yes, absolutely, if it's used badly, right? So giving money can be problematic if it's used badly. All right, uh, number uh, 14 is almost always a positive action for society. So is almost always a positive action. Number 14. Let's see if anybody gets that one correct. Yeah, that one's A, absolutely. So when you give your time to take care of sick children, to take elderly people for a walk, uh, to teach people English, for example, it's usually going to be a positive action for society. So BA. Okay, and subject to many overhead costs. Overhead costs are the extra costs. So um, in a restaurant, your overhead costs include paying for 
uh, staff, for the ingredients, for renting the location. Okay, in charities, that means uh, paying for advertising, paying for administration. So number 15 is B. So the correct answers here were C, B, A, and B. Hopefully most of you got at least a couple of those correct. If you didn't get these correct, go to the transcript. So go to the script at the back of the book and check it. Okay, check the answers. All right, let's keep going. Number 16, you had to choose two letters. Okay, what are the two reasons charities can be inefficient, so not working well? Okay, A, must pay salaries of employees. They give less than 10% of money received to the actual cause. The promotion of the charity, doing the most good with the least money. Some causes are not as important as others. What was the right answer there? Two of them, you needed two of them. The two reasons charities can be inefficient is they have to pay the salaries of employees and the advertising. So when you see those advertisings on or advertisements on TV for UNICEF, for example, or Red Cross, that money comes from donations a lot of the time. Okay, so A and C were the correct answers for number 16. Again, this would go into the same space on your answer sheet. Okay, so A and C. Okay, all right. Let's keep going. A few more here. Okay, here we had a flow chart. Write the correct letter A uh, to G next to the question. We had few, inefficient, optimal, generous, very many, MND cancer. So here's the charity, we're giving money, okay? So we give money to heart disease or heart disease research. It affects many people and it's good use of money. Okay, so here on the other side, if this was some kind of a disease, this should be some kind of disease. So the correct answer is MND. Now you have to choose the correct letter, so we put F. Very good, uh, Puneet, Kumar, uh, Natalie, Nikiforova, very nice, full deep. Natalie, uh, use the capital letter in the actual exam, okay, good. All right, so it affects many people, so logically it affects few people, right? These are often the opposites of one another, okay? And if you can figure that out and see the logic, then you'll do okay. So Bumi, good. Saul, good. Good job. All right. Dr. Krishna, good job on the previous. Charlie Sen, good job. All right, number 19. So obviously if this is good use of funds, then B makes the most sense here. It's inefficient use of funds for number 19, inefficient use of funds, okay? So F, A, and B were the correct answers there. All right, next one. Here we go. Last question, number 20, multiple choice. Choose the correct letter, A, B, or C. According to the guest, what is the main goal of charitable giving? Is it A, doing research, B, the importance of giving to good causes, or C, maximizing good? For the last one, number 20. Charlie, very good. C, maximizing good. Uh, remember to finish the sentence if you're not sure. So according to the guest, what is the main goal of charitable giving? According to the guest, the main goal of charitable giving is maximizing good. He says that very, very clearly, okay? So in the 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet, if you're not clear, if you're not sure about your choice, then do a Q&A as if you're two people. So this is me talking to 
myself. Okay, so I ask, what is the main goal of charitable giving? And then I answer, it is to maximize good in society. Okay, so self-dialogue can sometimes help you figure out the correct answers in these somewhat confusing questions. Okay, so try that, practice that. All right. Okay, um, so students, what did you get from 20? And uh, Outmatch says, I got 9 out of 20. Ooh, you got to work on that, Outmatch. Work on that active listening. Watch lots of movies, shows. Practice lots of IELTS. Do lots of speaking, reading, reading aloud. Okay. Charlie says 17 out of 20. That's pretty good, Charlie. Derek says 15 out of 20. That's not bad. It's a borderline. Nazir, 17. Jamalidin says 20 out of 20. That's fantastic, of course. Um, your goal, students, should be 16 or more, okay? Because part three and part four will be even more challenging. And we're going to do part three and part four tomorrow, okay? So... The uh, man's accent, by the way, if some of you are wondering, that was a New Zealand accent. New Zealand accent can be a little bit tricky if you haven't heard it before. And sometimes you will hear a New Zealand accent on the IELTS exam. So careful about that. Um, students, again, just a reminder, use good logic, especially in part one and two. You can figure out a lot of the answers for all of our six full exams, be sure to join our premium packages at ahelp.com for academic, G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for general. Tomorrow I'll be back with listening parts three and four. Uh, keep up the good studies. Use this extra time that you have at home to learn English, learn communication, improve yourself, become a better you. Bye for now. Much love to all of you from Budapest. Keep up the good work.